All right, hopefully that's better for the background noise. Sorry guys, I don't have the best of setups. I'm just gonna get this match over with, guys. I'm kinda running on empty here. <clears throat> it's been a fun, long day, a uh, long, fun day, but ready to go. So we're gonna get our players going here on Treasure Island. Game number one. Game number Tell me what you guys think about this. Tell me what you guys think about this. Tell me if this is better with my mic right up on my face. Here we go, game number one. Uh, if you guys will let me know how the sound is, I might get a little loud, so I don't want to do too much, but hopefully this cuts down a little bit on the, um, on the PC fan. So let me know if that's okay for you. Uh, Alzaris, if that's any better or if it's too loud or what. So let me know. In the blue corner, we have Caban's Celts. And in the red corner, we have Striker's Celts. So, Barracks already coming down for Caban. We got two uh, villagers on that Barracks there. And uh, we have a Barracks here for Striker as well. Only one villager on Striker's Barracks. Uh, he does have that second storehouse, though, on the tree line. There comes that second storehouse for Caban as well. So not too shabby. Spearman coming out for Striker. Caban now finally queuing up a Spearman as well. Or actually already has a Spearman out onto the field. My apologies. Neither player going for the water yet. That's a nice... Interesting little outcropping kind of spawn here on Caban's side of Treasure Island. But once again, just to recap, you guys have probably been with us all day, but Treasure Island does have the water, has the Treasure Island with a lot of resources. You don't see them because the players haven't scouted them but or scouted it, but there are several resource uh, mines over here, several stone and gold mines over here. We've got this plateau uh, kind of on the western edge of the map here. Uh, with some choke points there. Kind of an interesting spawn here. But very pr pretty balanced map. Uh, pretty fun map. In my opinion, it's my, my favorite map of the game. So. So. Let's see how this Kelp Mirror plays out. Let me see... What you guys think in the chat, if you think Kaman is going to take this series, or if you think Striker is going to take this series. Kaman's kind of an up-and-coming player, uh, so we'll see if he can pull one over on Striker here. Look at this, he does pick up a Villager, so that's pretty nice. Uh, Striker moving in with his Spearman now, uh, so he's going to be able to force Kaban away here, and Kaban may lose a Spearman, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like Kaman is going to try to turn around and take this spearman but does lose a spearman so he's gonna fall back and retreat Let's see here does he know about this second hunt for striker Kaban doesn't does know that the second hunt is here he doesn't see that he's on it yet 
But he does know that that second hunt is there, so... He may try to transition to that second hunt to try to force Striker off to this off of this second hunt. Kaban is on the water now. So Kaban is the first player to first player to get onto the water. <clears throat> Moving out once again with seven spearmen. Striker kind of maneuvering here. Come on, his population capped though. He needs to get a house down. He has no house queued up. He really needs to get a house. He's capped at 30. He's got look at this. He's got nothing. Oh goodness, you gotta build a house, bro. There it is. Okay, so come on's got a house coming down. Striker is in now in H2, and look at this. Immediately throwing down that town center. Has not yet killed these deer, so these deer are gonna sl <clears throat> slowly start to move away from this town center. Striker getting that second town center down fairly quickly. While Caban is still in age one. He is now headed to age two. So we'll see what he can craft up here. We'll see what he can come up with in terms of this age two play and this Kelt versus Kelt mirror. Come on, has forced Striker off of his hunt once again. Although Striker is now getting out some long swords, so. So he's going to be able to deal with those spearmen now better with the, the long swords. An unfortunate time, untimely demise for Striker's scout. That actually is pretty devastating for Striker. Scout is so so important, guys. This the scout is absolutely critical uh, in order to be able to do well uh, in terms of knowing what's on the map, knowing what your opponent's doing, all that good stuff. So, Caban going for the second town center, kind of a little bit closer to his base there on his gold mine and his berry bushes. And, yeah, that's going to be it's gonna be an interesting spot for him there. Uh, it's a little bit more defensive. All right, here comes Striker. Striker looking to cause some trouble. But Longsword's now onto the field for Caban as well. Caban has not scouted Striker's coastline just yet. Um, but he is basically assuming that Caban does not have any docks in play because he is not queuing up any swan ships. Although he is sending a scout over now, so he may be looking to maybe scout this to, to kind of see what his opponent's coastline is up to. And he's going to see that his opponent does not have a dock, so he does have firm control of the water. Or rather, I should say, he's uncontested on the water. And so, Caban is going to be able to continue to pump out those fishing sh ships. Not to be confused with fish and chips. <laughs> um, that's British, right? Stream froze briefly there. The voice was still fine, but the video seems to lag a little. Yeah, hopefully it's better now, uh, Alpha Leopard. <clears throat> Let me know how the video is now, though. Um, I was trying to adjust some settings again, so it briefly uh, froze up there. Come on, transitioning to this hunt. That's pretty forward, actually. It's pretty kind of kind of far out into the map here compared to the rest of his base. So interesting choice there from Caban. But look at this, Striker is going to move in now with his group of infantry here. And now Caban's scout is going to meet his untimely demise as well. So Striker revenges, or avenges I should say, um, avenges his fallen scout by getting the scout of Caban. Caban uh, is a little bit behind in terms of count here. Well, no, he's, it's about the same. It's, a, it's pretty pretty close to even in terms of unit count here. Here come two more longswords as well. They're going to push those villagers off that hunt. But now Striker doesn't like what he sees here. He is going to decide to back off. And he decides that he does not like this engagement. So he's going to fall back 
Uh, but he was able to, for his troubles, he was able to push Kaban off this hunt. Kaban's going to try to save this storehouse. Will he be able to? He will not. So, uh, Striker loses a few long swords, but again, is able to deny this hunt, at least for the time being. Meanwhile, Kaban electing to throw down another dock. And going pretty heavy into this Rax build here. I'd like to see maybe some uh, Sacred Groves. Maybe get some uh, Druids into the mix. As you can see, Striker has now gotten his own Druids into the mix. Uh, with this Sacred Grove here. He's getting a, another Sacred Grove down as well. And he's also opting for the Bard Hall. So he's going to look to upgrade his infantry. Probably a smart move in this infantry versus infantry battle uh, for the Celts. So nice choice there for Striker. But... Uh, here comes Kaban. Kaban is going to uh, try to push in and, and get some damage. And it looks like he's going to be able to get pretty deep into Striker's base here. Should be able to deny this armory. Uh, but now all of a sudden he's a little bit out of position. So Striker does have the positioning here. He's got Kaban's units completely trapped in his base. And yeah, that was... So <sighs> Kaban didn't really get anything for that except losing his entire army so maybe a bit of an ill-advised push there from Kaban at least to push so far into his opponent's base uh, so yeah. yeah that was a bit ill-advised there for Kaban but Kaban does definitely need to get some sacred groves into the mix here he does finally get some sacred groves down so there come the druids and also getting an armory, so yeah, this matchup honestly may end up coming down to not only macro, but also you know who can have the better tech upgrades for their infantry. We've got striker at 43 villagers to 65 for Kaban. So wow, Kaban actually has a significant villager advantage here. Um, that's actually pretty interesting that that he has such a significant advantage. In villagers, 23 uh, villager count there. So, Kaban has a significantly better macro game currently. I mean, you know, it is a lot of these fishing boats, but look at, I mean, there's only seven fishing boats. So, even without the fishing boats, he still has a nice uh, advantage there in terms of villagers. But here we go. Both players now kind of settled into this longsword druid composition. And so, really, these engagements are going to come down to who has the greater numbers and who is able to micro better. But look at this. I mean, Kaban is... This is insane. Kaban is significantly ahead in terms of population. Uh, about 40 population ahead, which, of course, you know, again, we've talked about a little over 20 of, uh, of that is villagers, but then the rest is military count. And so look at this. Kaban is going to push in, and he's going to lose some units. He needs to get his cursor over here under this battle. But, yeah, he just has the sheer numbers advantage, so he's able to lose a few units and still manage to win that engagement but half of striker's army was out of place there so now striker he is going to split his army up here he's going to try for a bit of a pincer movement here see if he can if he can flank uh either side of kaban's units here kaban is going to try to push in smartly kaban does not move far too far into the base of striker this time he is trying to damage the edge of striker's base here see what he can d get done kaban maybe needs to move to the edges here maybe get a little bit of raiding done there are several villagers over here that are completely undefended. Um, but look at this. Kaban is going to be able to get these villagers right here. So this is this is insane. Kaban is just completely outclassing Striker right now. He is going to try to move in here. Pushing onto the Sacred Grove. But look at this. Striker does have a nice little pincer here. So he's going to try to get uh, behind and try to get to these druids. But... Kaban, nice micro there to move some longswords back to, to protect these druids. Druids absolutely critical to the Celt composition. And yeah, look at this. This is good. Striker 
able to surround the units of Kaban and is is able to push him back a little bit, but Kaban holding strong. He, he is moving some reinforcements in, so and yeah, now Kaban, as a result of those druids, does ultimately win that engagement. Those druids, again, absolutely critical, absolutely important and he was able to keep them alive which kept him in the engagement so this could be this could be huge for striker look at this striker down by 60 population This is huge for Kaban. Kaban pushing in under the edge of the base here. Sorry, guys. Going to phone call there. Um, yeah, GG. Wow. Um, so. Yeah, that, that was absolutely insane performance there from Kaban. Um, GG, well played to both players. But Kaban absolutely dominated that game. He was able to get that pressure early, and um, and then, you know, Stryker kind of had a little bit of counter pressure, but it just wasn't enough. And look at this. Kaban had uh, the uh, score lead since really the beginning of the game, or towards the towards the beginning of the game. Uh, and look at this. Uh, had the villager count lead, uh, really, from the mid-game, and then it really widened uh, towards the end game there. And Kaban just absolutely exploded towards the end game here and was able to decimate Striker's army and never Striker was never able to recover. Uh, let's take a look at some macro here. As you can see, outgathered by about 8,000 resources. Uh, Kaban outgathered Striker. And looking at techs, Kaban had a slight advantage in terms of technologies. Uh, but again, the thing is, is you know these fishing boats. He he did have about six, seven fishing boats. That gave him an advantage in terms of villagers. But um, but his villager lead was still twenty plus. Uh, of course, by the end of the game, it was wider. But um, you know, throughout most of the game, he had uh, ten to twenty five villager leads. So that was just absolutely insane showing there from Kaban. All right, so we're going to have uh, Striker choose the map for game number two. And Striker must also select his civilization. And then we will move to uh, Kaban.
so let's see here. Come on, taking game number one on Treasure Island. So we're going to head into game two. In this best of three. So, yeah, that was that's a good game. Like I said, um, Pharos, uh, I guess earlier did you mean that um, when you said they're not on the same skill level, did you mean that Striker's not on the same skill level as Caban, or what? <laughs> um, let's see here. Let me see if I can catch up on chat here real quick. Pharos, you're eating your words a little bit there, bud. He's less experienced, and it shows. Very skilled, however. 40 pop difference, yep. Um, yeah, that was, uh, was an impressive showing for Caban. Caban, honestly, has a really high ceiling, it looks like. You know, it can, as he continues to learn the game, uh, he, it's going to be impressive for sure. Carnage says, Mista playing on Caban's account confirmed. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, Varigal says um, the moment he built docks and Striker didn't respond was huge for Kaban. Yeah, um, that that definitely gave him an advantage having that uh, those fishing ships there. So, <laughs> or fish and chips. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wish Re Recon was here. I was uh, teaching him about what I learned about you Brits. But we have Alpha Le Alpha Leopard in the house to uh, represent our Brits. Impressive Celtic Civ there, Spaniard. Appreciate it, Alpha. Treasure Island without treasure. Yeah, we, we all day we've we've played Treasure Island a few times and we've not gotten to the Treasure Island itself. So I'm a little disappointed about that, but that's okay. Fair enough, I was so wrong. All right, Recon is in the house. Recon is in the house. All right, let me see if our players are ready. Oh my gosh. Um. Yes. Uh, Pharaoh says top players feel a disturbance in the force. Indeed, indeed, Kaban apparently is a force to be reckoned with for sure. So. So we will see what our next map is going to be. I'm waiting on confirmation from Striker.
Now, Kaban, <clears throat> Kaban does have to change sieves, so... Waiting to hear from Striker. Waiting to hear from Striker. Waiting to hear from Striker. Okay, so Kaban Stryker has chosen to stay with the Celts, and Kaban has chosen to change to the Greeks. So we're gonna have Greeks versus Celts, Kaban. Uh, is the Greeks and Striker is the Celts and Striker has chosen equal footing as the map. So Greeks of Caban versus Celts of Striker on equal footing. Are you ready? Get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn ready because we are going right into game number two. And just kidding, my game crashed. Wah, wah, wah. Anticlimactic. Where about says, is Kaban good with sibs other than Kel? I don't know. We will see, I suppose. Pharaoh says he's never seen him play nine Celts. Okay. Well, we'll see. I mean, his Greek Civ is only level four, so uh, I guess he doesn't play them much. <laughs> Absolutely. My game crashed, so y'all know what that means. Me memes. Memes and me. <laughs> you know what that means. It's time for memes, which is... Hashtag blame recon. Let's get it spammed in the chat, boys and girls. Hashtag blame recon. Game crashed, so it's time to meme. You know what that means. It's time for memes, which is hashtag blame recon. Okay. All right, we're back in. Let's see if I can try it again. We're back in. Let's see if I can try it again. I'm rhyming all day. All day. All right. Take number two. Greeks of Caban versus Celts of Striker on equal footing. All right, I hit start game and it did or begin PVP and it did not crash immediately. So, recon, good job, buddy. Way to get on top of things. Way to fix your mistakes. It's okay. We still love you. We still care about you. Um, and we appreciate uh, when must you bless. own up to your mistakes. Hinoko, Hinoko Soku, Hinoko Soku. 
Thank you very much for the follow on the Project Celeste channel. Recon says, what is wrong with the sound? What is wrong with the sound? Okay. All right, folks. Okay. All right. The game is not starting. So you know what that means. Time for memes. Game failed to launch. Recon, what are you doing? Okay, take number two, or no, excuse me, take number three. Third time is the charm, maybe, folks. We will see. Come on, just work. Okay, all right, now. Now we can say, thank you, Recon. Thank you for fixing your mistake. We're in the game. Again. Listen, bro. Listen. I still love you. But can you please get your shit together? Thank you. All right. Game number two. Commencing now. Just kidding. Hey, third time is not the charm, folks. Maybe the fourth. Or who knows, maybe we'll go for the tenth time. Maybe we'll just, for the rest of our lives, continue trying to start game number two, Kaban vs. Striker. Maybe this will be our own personal hell. This, right now. Alright. Uh, so the players are saying that they uh, did not like their hunts, and yeah, actually the hunts were legitimately terrible. So, I mean... It was still somewhat balanced because the hunts were terrible for both players. Uh, Kaban had one, two. Strugger had one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, pretty terrible hunts, so. So we'll allow it. <laughs> and now Recon fighting back with the hashtag. Hashtag not my, my, uh, not my map. Which is technically true. He, he did not do Weary Woot. Or he did not do uh, Equal Footing. Okay. All right. We got a hunt here and we got a hunt here. So we are in business, boys and girls. Finally, for real this time, get your popcorn ready. Because we are in game number two, Kaban versus Striker. The up and coming Karate Kid Kaban versus the seasoned sensei Striker. That was good, actually. I'm pretty proud of that. We will see if. The young, hip, newcomer can knock off the balance team member in striker. We've got equal footing. We've got Greeks versus Celts. We'll call it the battle for Thrace. Barracks coming down here for striker as the Celts. And Barracks also down for Kaban. Kaban using two villagers to build the barracks. So his barracks will most likely... Be up a little bit sooner than Strikers. Striker on this hunt here. He's got a second hunt here. Kaban on this hunt here. And has a second hunt here. Let's we'll see how this matchup plays out, folks.
Will Caban take the series 2-0? Or will Stryker even it out 1-1? We will see Stryker gathering his cows here. Stryker is a beef-loving kind of guy, if you know what I mean. So, he's got cows galore here. And look at this. Look at this. Cow thievery. You know, I think cow, Grand Theft Cow is uh, punishable by hand slapping in at least 17 countries. So, Stryker committing some international crimes here. Uh, stealing these cows from Caban. Caban amassing his spearmen here. Uh, but Stryker also has a decent mass of spearmen. So, Stryker should be ready. Uh, either player should be ready. Uh, it looks like Caban is going to choose to move out across the map. Stryker, though, f for all that he loves about his cows, he is yet to notice that he has two idle cows over here. So, he needs to go pick up those those cows and get them moving. Caban's going to move in and he's going to find five spearmen here for Stryker. So, he is going to decide that he does not like that engagement. He's going to fall back. However, he is streaming more spearmen across the map, so he may be able to turn the tide in his favor. Both players still in age one as it stands. Here comes an engagement. One spearman is down. And yeah, look at this. So, Caban moving in and is able to get one villager and maybe two. Uh, does get two. Wow. So... Caban again with this early pressure, and we'll see if Stryker can respond better than he did last game. You know, last game after he got hit with this early pressure, um, he kind of fell apart, and you know, never was ever he was not ever really able to recover after he lost some early villagers, and um, so we'll see if he can respond better this time. Look at this! Oh man, Caban almost stole stole those cows too. Uh, but maybe he's respecting the international law this time. Nope, just kidding. He does steal those cows. So once again, Caban, forever known as the uh, cow thief. Caban the cow thief. But look at this. He's moving his spearmen around, and now he's going to hit this tree line. So again, this tough, tough pressure from Caban is just a lot for Stryker to be able to deal with. Striker is now transitioned to the second hunt, although he hasn't killed these deer. And y'all, I can't stress enough. Look at this. He just lost a couple seconds walking time because these deers have moved away from the storehouse now. Got to kill those deers for sure. Now Striker does have some long swords under the field. He is an H2. Caban also an H2, but Striker does have the home field advantage here. Is able to get those long swords onto these spearmen, so is going to be able to turn the tide. And he's going to be able to drop a couple spearmen here and scare away the rest of Caban's forces there. Now Stryker throwing down his second town center over here on the eastern side of his base. He's going to protect a couple uh, mines, a couple uh, tree line, or a little bit of tree line there. Meanwhile, Caban again going for a very defensive town center. So Caban uh, appears to favor... Caban appears to favor this kind of close um, defensive town center. And, you know, again, we've talked about how it's a trade-off in a lot of ways. Sometimes, you know, you want to go for this defensive town center f purely for the defense. Or sometimes, you know, you just get this fast town center up and you've eliminated the walking time to try to get a, a further town center. Uh, and so it might be able to help you get a slight edge in terms of villager count. So, again, there are different trade-offs, but Stryker is now trying to counter-push, but he is going to find that Caban has now transitioned to getting Hippaspus onto the field. And so Hippaspus are anti-infantry, just like the longswords are, and so that is going to be too much for Stryker to be able to contend with there. So Caban has now forced Stryker back away. So now it looks like both players are going to settle into age 2. We'll see how they choose to play age 2. It does look like Stryker is choosing an archery range to get out some slingers. 
in anticipation, surely, of the Greek Toxoti. So, well, Slingers will be able to deal with a Greek ranged ball fairly effectively. Uh, these long swords trying to cause some trouble, but they are going to simply meet their end. Well, one does escape with his life, but one was not so fortunate. And now Stryker getting some slingers onto the field. Uh, he's got his long swords coming out as well. I imagine we might see a sacred grove from Stryker here shortly. Meanwhile, Caban is now getting archer range and archer range out and is going for a third barracks. So it looks like Caban is heavily expecting Stryker to invest in long swords. And so it looks like Caban is choosing to counter with a heavy Hepaspus composition supplemented by some Toxotis. So we'll see which composition will have the upper hand. I suspect Stryker may. Um, if he's able to micro the long swords under the Hepaspus, and he does need to get some druids uh, into into the fray here. He okay. Here comes the Sacred Grove. Second archer range down as well. So he's gonna invest heavily into these slingers and get uh, some uh, uh, druids out there. And look at this has also gone to age three. So Stryker headed to age three while. Caban is still squarely in age two. Uh, does not quite have the resources yet for age three. Uh, this could be potentially dangerous for for Striker if Caban were to push at this very moment. But because uh, Striker is somewhat low on gold, but it looks like Caban is pretty comfortable at the front door of his base. So Striker is going to be able to get to age three without too much trouble. And We'll see what he transitions to in H3. I imagine he's probably going to transition, especially given how much he is investing in these archery ranges. I anticipate uh, him transitioning to some bowmen, especially given the fact that, you know, especially if he's seen this... Um, yeah, he, he sees these three barracks, so he knows that, you know, Caban is investing pretty heavily into these Hippaspas, so... See if that pays off for Stryker, but now all of a sudden Caban once again on the attack and is able to move those gold gatherers away, but not much else is won except a couple seconds of idle time. Both players do need to see about starting to establish some market presence. A little bit of a raid here from Stryker, just a few units, so not too much. Not so much that Caban can't handle, but he is trying to make life difficult on Caban. Caban has pretty much fully retreated back to his base. He's decided that he is not prepared for this composition from Stryker, and indeed Stryker transitioning to those Celtic Bowmen in addition to the Slingers, so... This could be nice for Stryker. Stryker is yet... He's in age 3, but he's yet to get his third town center. Um, so that's perhaps a bit of an oversight from him. He's He doesn't have the stone or the wood, really. So he really needs to... Um, I just hit the Windows button instead. Whoopsies. Sorry, boys and girls. He needs to... Um, he needs to gather from stone more so than just this one stone miner. And he's got a few... Where? Where else is... Where else is he gathering stone from? Oh, he just moved them. So, yeah, he is now starting to gather more from stone so he can try to get to that third town center. Um, the population is not so much an issue as just the, you know, he did get to age three faster, so you'd like to see that villager advantage from being in age three and having that third town center. Uh, but instead, he invested his wood into the slingers and bowmen. And we'll see if it pays off for him. He is trying to press the issue. He's going to pu push into the front door of Stryker. That poor Hepaspus caught about every arrow in the air. It was a little bit of an overkill, but that's okay. 
Stable's coming down for Caban, so it looks like Caban may want to get some Sarasophroy onto the field uh, to try to counter those Bowmen and Slingers. And indeed, he already has one queued up from this Stables. And he is also in age 3 himself now as well. So some Hoplites coming out onto the field. These Hoplites are very powerful units, uh, very tanky, and uh, have a, a decent bonus against Cavalry. Uh, and then he's also transitioning to some Peltists. So um, it looks like Caban is pretty worried about this ranged composition from Striker. So he is investing fairly heavily into these anti-ranged units, including the Peltas and the Sarasophroys. So, uh, meanwhile, back at Stryker's base, uh, he's building this third town center finally. So he, he does have his third town center up, and uh, it's a bit of a forward town center, kind of at the front of his base here to cover this gold mine. So pretty smart choice there from him. He recognizes that soon enough he'll be out of this gold mine and out of this gold mine, and so he needs that third gold mine so there he is, there, moving in a small force as a raiding force, it looks like. And Caban's eastern, uh, the eastern edge of Caban's base is pretty much open for the taking. Um, you know, we could see Striker swing around this back door, hit this gold mine, hit the wood line over here. Uh, or even maybe try to push into these houses here. So we'll see what he does with this raiding party. Uh, meanwhile, Striker is also getting some horsemen into the fold. So whether that was intentional or accidental, the horsemen should be able to help deal with these Sarasophroi. But here comes a big engagement in the middle. These armies are somewhat passing each other right now. Striker is going to realize this. is going to stop those units. He's going to try to kite with those bowmen. Uh, those Hippaspas are going to try to get onto those range units. But they're going to find that Striker has moved his army back. So Caban is smart enough not to give pursuit. And meanwhile, look at this. Striker... Now does have this raiding party squarely in the back of Caban's base, and he is going to be able to deal some damage to these gold miners. Does not look like he's going to be able to snag any gold miners to, to kill, but uh, he does force some idle time. He is now moving to the tree line of Caban. So now Caban, uh, pressured a little bit here, is going to try to have to respond to this. He does move his entire army to defend against this raid from Striker, so... He is going to very quickly decimate these marauding longswords from Striker, but meanwhile, that allows Striker the ability to push back out into the middle of the map here. And if he is quick, he may be able to push his advantage, but no. Uh, Caban very smartly deals with that raid and then very quickly comes back to the front of his base in anticipation of Striker's push. So nice, uh, nice defense there from Caban. He was caught a little off guard, but nevertheless was able to deal with it quite nicely. So now our players are preparing for what could be a massive age three engagement. Striker does have a significant population advantage as it stands right now. He's almost maxed out at 180. Here comes a little bit of an engagement here with players poking and prodding and taking a look to, to see how the battlefield looks. And they decide that the battlefield is not what they would like to uh, be on currently. So instead, both players... Uh, fall back to the front of their bases here. And Striker trying to go for a bit of a forward fortress here. This forward fortress is going to secure a little bit of defense for this uh, gold mine here in the middle, which uh, may have been a, a gold mine that Caban wanted to contest. Uh, so nice fortress there from Striker. He is now going to try to press the issue. He is maxed out at 180. He does have some uh, armory upgrades coming behind this as well. So here comes a big push. The horsemen onto the Hippaspus of Caban and look at this these bowmen raining hellfire down onto these Hippaspas so Caban very quickly losing units is gonna decide to fall back striker back to 180 population however Caban not far behind he is investing into some spearmen and padromos so those padromos are gonna be able to deal with those horsemen and now striker again solidifying his position in the middle of the map here it does have a nice set up between this fortress and this town center and it looks like he's also building a fortress over here on the left as well so very nicely done there from striker to establish map presence in the middle of the map both of these kind of middle lanes here are now going to be defended by these fortresses uh, and and as well as these gold mines so this could be big for striker especially if Caban's not able to establish a good market line he is setting up a market line now uh, but it is relatively undefended as it stands and Striker's scout is over here 
Uh, he, he should maybe be moving his scout, maybe adding some wa watch posts so he can see the rest of the map. Um, but Kaban, if he's not able to protect this market line, it could be bad news for him because he has now lost control, essentially, of this middle portion of the map. And the only gold mines remaining that he may be able to s procure is, is these are these eastern and western uh, gold mines here. And look at this, a little bit of a two-pronged raid here from Striker. He's going to move in with these horsemen. He's going to be able to get a few villagers over here on the west and a couple horsemen as well on the east. And so these horsemen are going to be able to harass these farmers. A small group of units here is coming to deal with these horsemen while Caban is sending the primary uh, portion of his forces over here to deal with these horsemen here. But look at that. He's able to snag some villagers. Even got a house, and then he's out of there. He is out. So, yeah, Caban now responding with these walls. He recognizes that he has got to stem the bleeding. He has got to stop these raids. Uh, otherwise, he's going to continue to fall behind. He's got 66 villagers to 78 for striker. So, uh, pretty significant military, or I'm sorry, pretty significant uh, villager advantage there for striker. And look at this striker headed to age four. So Stryker is headed to the Golden Age. Caban, he has not rebuilt that house yet. He really needs to rebuild that house. But these horsemen are coming back in for more damage. They're coming back in to cause more problems. They have not had enough quite yet. They're going to pick off another villager. Make life difficult here for Caban. But Caban does have split forces. So he may be able to capture them in a bit of a pincer here. Yeah, he's going to be able to drop a few horsemen here. But those horsemen are going to run out. They are going to run into this wall, though. So are they going to be able to escape in time? Will they be able to get out? Here they come, racing around this edge. They do barely get out. And they are going to, in fact, get that villager as well. So nice timing there for Striker. He's going to be able to get out before that wall is built. But now Striker is in the Golden Age. So this is big. Not quite all of the melee Age 3 upgrades, but... He does have H3 upgrades for his range units, and will probably shortly get those H4 upgrades for his range units. So these range units are indeed something to be reckoned with. He's moving some slingers out to the left there, but now all of a sudden, look at this. Throwing down another fortress here, getting a market line over here. Has a watch post over here on the left, so um, Striker very much in control of this map now at this point. However, Caban... Not dead yet, not done yet. Moving in, going to push into this center part of the map here, but is going to find a fortress in his way, and now is suddenly caught between the fortress and the forces of Striker. So Striker trying to capture his opponent off guard here, but Caban doing a nice job of getting those Padromos onto those horsemen. So now Striker is wanting to fall back here and fall under to uh, under the defense and protection of his fortress but meanwhile look at this instead of the horseman he's now moved his slingers in um for a raid and and i wonder if this is perhaps a suicide mission for these slingers uh because ultimately um he he did single out the slingers to be sent in for this raid uh and um and, and it does not look like he has any intention of keeping these slingers alive so it looks like these slingers have been sent on a suicide mission they did in fact pick up several villagers and so they have done their duty to the empire the celtic empire but they will meet their demise does striker move in at this opportune moment though look at this almost 50 bowmen a few druids a few horsemen here the question is will he see this caravan line caban has not finished this wall over here yet and these horsemen are now over here. Does Striker know about this market? He does not, but he will see these caravans. So he does now know. He can infer that these markets are here, even though he hasn't scouted the markets. And yeah, this is going to be devastating for Caban because Caban's last gold mine is right here. It is almost depleted, and he does not have access to any further gold mines on the map. And so this market line is going to be the only thing that's keeping him in the game gold-wise. And suddenly, suddenly he is cut off. And he's going to try to move his forces over here to break this blockade. But Stryker very smartly moves his army to intercept. And this could be it, folks. This could be game 
right here, Stryker does a significant amount of damage to Caban's forces. And now, Stone Thrower onto the field as well. So, Stryker in a commanding, commanding lead here. Looking for that final blow, that final nail in the coffin. He is going to move in now on these markets with these horsemen. And there's not much Caban can do about it. Caban moving out some Padromos to their death. Unfortunately for them. And this could be game, folks. Striker moving in with his full force. Looking for that killing blow. That final... That final punch to bring his opponent to his knees. Carpentum's on the field now as well. Maxed out at 200 population. Caban still under 160. Striker playing it slow, using his stone thrower to just slowly melt away these buildings. And so he is in it for the long haul here, making sure that he doesn't make any mistakes. He doesn't want to foolishly lose his army to an ill-fated push, although I don't know that he would, but he is just playing it safe here, slowly moving in. He's got this stone thrower here. He's going to pack him up and move him a little bit closer and just slowly, slowly close the gap close the ga the grasp on the throat of Caban here and, and slowly choke the life out of Caban and his last stand. So Caban won game one in commanding fashion, but barring a miracle, it appears that Stryker will win game two in commanding fashion. Kaban is in age three, but he is very lacking in age three units. He's got some hoplites and some padroma, or he did have hoplites, but he needs to uh, he needs to maybe get a temple down. He has no academy either, and perhaps his inexperience with the Greeks is showing. He has no temple or no academy, um, so that could be a bit of an oversight there for him. And yeah, if he comes back and watches this video, maybe he can learn a little bit in terms of the Greeks just remember that you want to make use of the Greek technology and look at this striker using those powerful powerful sacrifices for the Celts the right of Andrasta increasing the damage of military units by 15 percent so he's now moving these powerful carpentums in position to deal damage getting these stone throwers onto these town centers and at this point it is just a matter of time and Kaban does call the GG Folks, get your popcorn out. Let me see the hype in chat. We've got game three coming up. Game three is coming right up. So, let's break down this game. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess the rules are both players now change sieves. our last map yeah so So, uh, we're going to let our players change their sieves there. Uh, again, nice game from Stryker. He just slowly amassed control of the map. Uh, his macro was ahead uh, almost the entire game. And uh, he had control of the resources. He had control of the game. Let's take a look at some stats here. 
Towards the mid game is when Striker started to gain his advantage in terms of villager population. And never relinquished the villager advantage. Striker had a great composition. And despite, as you can see here, despite having less military population, was able to win this late game engagement, uh, which Caban was never able to recover from. And that was kind of the killing blow there. And then those last few minutes were Striker slowly closing out the game there. So nicely done from him. And again, look at this macro advantage here. Almost 20,000 resources more for Striker. So nice advantage there for him. And significant technology advantage. 24 techs to the 14 techs of Caban. So Striker coming back, winning game two in commanding fashion. And now, folks, we're headed to game number three. So, let me see what you guys think in chat. Do you think... Striker will be able to come back and close this series out, or do you think Caban will close out the series? Tell me what you think. Caban will be playing the Persians. And Striker will be playing the Egyptians. So, do you think Striker's Egyptians take game number three, or do you think Caban's Persians take game number three? All tied up one to one. Headed to game number three. And the map will be Sheltered Pass. Or, wait. Did we, yeah, Sheltered Pass is the next map. Game, map number one was Treasure Island. Oh gosh, guys, it's been a long day. Was it Treasure Island? Yeah, it was. It had to be. All right, so Alpha Leopard says he's got $500 on Striker winning round number three. Let's see here. Weary Out thinks Striker also is going to win, and Tangrel thinks Striker maybe. What does the winner uh, of the tournament get other than the heads of his victims? So in addition to the heads of his victims, he gets the head of 50 euros. I mean, uh, 50, no, I'm just kidding. He gets 50 euros and uh, some in-game uh, in game loot, some empire points, coin uh, in-game, but then also 50 real American euros. I'm kidding. Um, here in Marca, we say Got that real American dollars, real, uh, real euros. Fifty of them will go to the winner. So very cool, very cool. Let me see if our players are ready. Get a brief countdown here. Okay. 
be, I prefer English pounds, to be honest, worth more. Uh, yes, indeed, that is true. The pound is the most... Uh, the, uh, gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Most valuable currency in the world, so. Alright, our players are ready. So we are going to go ahead and get straight away into game number three without further ado. Much ado about nothing indeed. If I can find the map, Sheltered Pass, where are you? Thank you. Tangle says, can I get some Kuwaiti dinars, please? Uh, if you would prefer, my friend. Two trillion Kuwaiti dinars to Tangle. All right. All right, folks. I hope that your popcorn is ready. Because... Game number three begins now. In our blue corner, Kaban playing as the Persians. In our red corner, Striker. Playing as the Egyptians. The map is Sheltered Pass. We've seen it before. It just comes down to which player can gain the upper hand. Which player will gain the advantage. And which player will win the series. Striker kind of opening up on a hunt here that's a little bit behind his base. Um, Kaban has a little bit better of a, a hunt there, although Kaban does not really have a... Yeah, he's got a second hunt here. Um, but Striker's hunts are a little bit... F well, he kind of chose to go for the further hunt for some reason. Uh, he had a bit of a closer hunt here, and this hunt even was a little bit closer. Um, but nevertheless... Uh, he does have a few nice choices there, while Kaban has uh, just a couple hunt choices here. Uh, so I'm actually... I'd like to see where Kaban's third hunt is. Guys, let me know what you think. Is this a fair map spawn, you think? I want to be fair to our players. Looks like it might be. Okay, so. Barracks coming down here for Striker. And Barracks is already up for Kaban. Kaban already has a few Sparabara. So, will Kaban choose to go on the offensive with his spar bar? He is so far. He's moving his spar bar in here. He's going to find this an empty hunt. And so, going for this bit of an unconventional hunt here may pay off in the long run for Striker, or will it? Striker doesn't want to lose his scout there. His scout's down to 4 HP, so he really needs to keep his scout alive here. And look at this. Striker is in the Bronze Age. He has built the Temple of Ra, so he's in Age 2, but he is pushed off, pushed off this hunt. And so far, he doesn't have really any spears, although he does, because he has gone to Age 2 much sooner, he is now going to be able to get out these Axemen, which are anti-infantry, and so they are going to be able to deal with these Sparabara quite nicely. And so now Striker has decided, or I'm sorry, Kaban has decided that um, he's dealt enough damage, he's forced those hunters off of their deer, and so he is going to fall back a little bit. 
He is headed to age two now. Caban is. He's got no Sparbara queued up, so perhaps he's wanting to save his resources for those age two units. We shall see. Striker deciding to go ahead and put down roots, no pun intended, with these berries. And that's an interesting choice. Uh, he does have these hunts over here. It looks like he's choosing to put his town center on the hunt. Um, so it looks like, I guess, that he is wanting to maybe establish a little bit of defense with this town center and defend this hunt quite nicely. Um, so a bit unconventional, but... But we'll see how it goes. And after we've talked about Caban's extremely defensive opening town centers, second town centers, he now gets about as close as you can get uh, with a second town center to your first town center. Um, so going extremely close, extremely defensive with this second town center here, um, it's going to basically just provide double town center fire here in the center of his base. Um, so again... Perhaps could have maybe established a little bit more map control uh, with uh, that town center. Perhaps on these berry bushes, the stone mine, or perhaps here along this tree line and this stone mine, um, or even you know even along his tree line, tree line even. Uh, but we'll see if it pays off for him. We'll see if it does well for him. Striker, not much going on. He's getting out a few axemen. He is finishing off this hunt to this burning storehouse. Come on, he's going to move in with a scout, see what he can see here. He's going to find not a ton in the base of Striker, but that being said, Caban does not have a ton to, to make much offense with. He does not have a ton to, to really push with, so both players are pretty... Pretty content to hang out in their base, build up their economies, and s just slowly start amassing their units. Second barracks coming down for Striker. Thirty villagers to thirty-one, so pretty even uh, in the villager count here. Striker does have these Priestess of Ra empowering these town centers to get out those villagers a little bit faster there for the Egyptians. And Striker rallying to stone here. I'm going to be interested to see what he chooses to do with this stone. I wonder if he is wanting to head to age 3 and either get that third town center or get a fortress down uh, to perhaps... Uh, yeah, he is headed to age 3. Um, so perhaps he's thinking third town center... And maybe even with this amount of stone gatherers, perhaps even a fortress. Uh, maybe get out some more elephants. Who knows? We'll see. But he is electing to get out some slingers as well. So anticipating the Persian bowmen. Which is a, a smart choice because indeed Caban has begun producing those all-powerful Persian bowmen. Striker is now in H3 though. So, And yeah, kind of as I... As I thought he might do, here comes a fortress. And this fortress is going to defend this hunt over here. It's going to defend the eastern part of his base. Uh, but I think ultimately this fortress is going to... Uh, I think his idea is maybe to get out some some more elephants uh, that will be able to get onto those bowmen of the Persians. And, you know, with war elephants, if you're able to get a, a nice little mass of war elephants, it can be difficult for your opponent to bring them down if you have a good mass of them. But Caban has something else in mind. Caban has thoughts, dreams even, of winning this series out from under the nose of Stryker. So Caban moving across the map with his force here. And he's going to find Stryker is not super well equipped militarily, though he is somewhat equipped defensively. Does have a nice... Kind of three-pronged defense here between these two town centers and this fortress. 
He is going to have to move those gold miners, so those gold miners will be idle a little bit. Uh, but look at this, Caban. Watching for a market over here, I think, with this bowman. So nice, smart play there from Caban. Striker going to lose a couple villagers there. Or, no, maybe he... Maybe he saved them, but... Yeah, I did save that villager by 5 HP. Ultimately, Caban not going to be able to crack the defensive striker, so striker again has a nice kind of defensive wall on his base here due to these defensive buildings, town centers, and fortresses here. And look at this. Extending that with this third town center. Striker. Bro. Y'all know what I'm going to say, right? Leave space. You got to leave space so that your villagers can get in there and gather. But he is going for this third town center over here. This is a nice placement from him. It kind of defends this choke point here. Defends these trees and these re these uh, mines here. So Striker is going to have that third town center advantage. Going to be able to get <clears throat> villager production ramped up here. In fact, he is uh, about dead even with Caban right now in terms of villagers. So he should be able to move ahead pretty quickly uh, with that third town center. But Caban is not too far behind. He is going to be in age three shortly as we speak. And he does have a still a slight population advantage. Though Stryker is trying to gain ground quickly. And look at this. We've got chariot archers onto the field for Stryker. And a war elephant. So far only one war elephant. More chariot archers coming down out of the field. Triple stables here. In addition to that, double racks. Meanwhile, at Caban's base, he's going for a triple stables as well. And he's got a double archer range. Finally getting an armory here, Caban is. Perhaps one thing that Caban could work on is remembering to get his army a little, armory a little sooner. Uh, is a little bit of a raid here from Caban, but Stryker has ideas we of a raid have himself. Your coming. Check this out, guys. Give you anxiety. Hosting Project Celeste with 124 viewers. Welcome to Give You Anxiety's viewers. Thanks for joining us. I hope you stick around and check this out. Guys, we have got game number three. You're just in time because we've got game number three versus Caban. Uh, Caban versus Striker in Age of Empires Online Project Celeste. So welcome. Super huge shout out to give you anxiety. Thanks so much for the host. We are now well over 140 viewers. So you are, again, just in time for this action. Both players trying to get a little Ahura bit of rating Master, dust. Bless. A little bit of rating done. Uh, but now Caban is trying to push into the front door of Stryker. Again, the question will be, can he crack this defense of Stryker? Stryker has really no buildings that are undefended in front of his defensive buildings here. He does have these big war elephants right in the front lines there, so those war elephants are going to be able to stomp down on those Sparrow Bar. These chariot archers are trying to kite a little bit, and Caban decides that this engagement is not something that he wants to take, so he, he is going to fall back with his bowman there. He's going to save his bowman. He did lose his Sparabara to this engagement. And as it stands, Stryker, these war elephants in front of these chariot archers are going to be absolutely huge. And look at this, Stryker taking advantage of winning that engagement by moving forward, getting a fortress down. He's going to be able to secure this choke point here and defend these resources, specifically this gold mine here. So Stryker, this could be could be good for him if he can translate this into solid map control and ultimately may win the game off of the back of that engagement. Come on, transitioning Ahura to, must bless you. to some Asabara. So we'll see if that pays off for him. Going to catch up on real quick on follows. Uh, Suamak, thank you for the follow earlier. Legend Moha, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate you guys. Listen, again, give you anxieties, followers. Um, we appreciate you guys uh, checking out the channel. Uh, so if you've not seen Age of Empires online before, be sure to check it out. 
This game is completely free to play. There are no microtransactions. Uh, it is run by fans, so you'll absolutely love it if you love Age of Empires games. Uh, be sure to check it out. Link's in the description below. Check this out. Striker trying to push his advantage here. He's going to do a little bit of raiding. He's going to be able to get a few villagers on that wood line there, but these Asabara are going to scare off these chariot archers, funnily enough, because they, they would be able to kill those Asabara, but uh, the villager count is now significantly in Striker's favor at 85 to 63 for Caban, so uh, Striker about 20, a little over 20 villagers ahead here. Caban has ideas of a little bit of raiding his himself, but I don't know that he'll find much with these units here. Striker has yet to set up a market line, uh, nor has Caban, or excuse me, Caban has set up a market line over here on the western edge of the map uh, so that could be critical for Caban to be able to defend uh, because he is going to somewhat quickly run out of defensible gold mines unless he's able to establish himself on the map here he needs to maybe move out maybe get a fortress down over here or a fortress down over here to try to defend these gold mines and secure them for himself but striker it's moving in slowly but surely, looking for a killing blow. Caban has his group of Asabara. He is going to try to move those Asabara behind and get to those Chariot Archers, but very smartly, Striker does fall back, back to this choke point to defend against that flank from those Asabara. So nicely played there from Striker. Striker only almost maxed out at 180, whereas Caban has pretty much stalled that at 160. So now, we'll see, can Caban get his population up to the 180 max? Another War Elephant coming down onto the field for Striker, so Striker slowly but surely amassing these War Elephants, and again, the more Elephants your opponent is able to get, the more difficult it is for them to be brought down. You know, I'd like to maybe see Caban transition to some mounted archers here. Um, these Asabara, I don't believe, are going to be able to cut it against these war elephants and these chariot archers. You know, the chariot archers are just going to be able to kite the, the Asabara, not to a great extent, but somewhat. 10 speed to, I believe, uh, 8.5. So the Asabara are faster, but again, you know... It's just with these elephants in the in the front, now five elephants. He really needs to get some mounted archers out onto the field so that he can get that anti-cavalry bonus from those mounted archers. He does begin to tra transition to mounted archers. He also really needs to get out some immortals. You know, Immortals are perhaps the strongest unit that the Persians have in their arsenal. And so the immortals absolutely need to get out onto the field for Caban. And again, Caban... You know, Pharos mentioned earlier that Caban uh, maybe is most familiar with the Celts, and I think that might be showing here, uh, as Caban is, is not super familiar here with the the Persian military and what forces he has at his disposal. You know, he he's only now getting mounted archers onto the field, and, and again, this may be too little too late because these war elephants are just so powerful once you got once you have, you know, this many of them. And so he's just not getting mounted archers. He has no immortals yet. And in fact, he's not even built any immortal camps. So yeah, Caban, again, if you go back and watch this, just don't forget that the Persian military is built on the backbone of the immortals. Striker, a huge bank of gold. He has gold for absolute days. Caban, trying to catch back up in terms of population, did lose a house, so he needs to get a house back down to get back to 180 population. But yeah, this is just so dangerous for Caban here. Caban is on his last leg here. He's trying desperately to hold on to his game. Desperately trying to defend his nation. But the Egyptians would like to have a word. And the Egyptians are pushing in. Striker has now hit the Golden Age. So Stryker is in H4. The Egyptians, <clears throat> somewhat like the Greeks and Babylonians, are are at their best in the later ages. And so now, 
it's just going to be difficult for Caban to come back from. A very forward fortress coming down here for uh, Striker. He's only building it with one villager, so so that's a little bit ill-advised there to build a, vill a fortress with one villager. But I guess if you're able to defend that one villager, I guess it doesn't matter that much. But again, Caban just does not have much left. He's down to 130 population and... I believe this may be the game. This could be the beginning of the end for Caban. Striker pushing in here. He has lost yet another elephant, but Caban does not have an answer as it stands. Down goes more buildings for Caban. Again, he's trying to hold on, but these chariot archer champions are just so powerful, as are these war elephants to provide that meat shield. Down go more houses. Down goes the stables. And slowly but surely, Striker solidifies the game. He was worried. He lost game one to the relatively unknown Caban. But Striker, like any top tier player would, is able to bring the game back into his favor. Was able to win game number two and is now minutes away. Minutes away from from winning game number three and the series in the Cup of Beer tournament. Caban down to 90 population. And this is... This is the end for Caban. He has plenty of resources. He just doesn't have very many. He doesn't have very many uh, military buildings left. He's desperately trying to build some more military buildings because he recognizes that he doesn't have enough to to keep up with his resources to be able to produce units. But Striker now just having his way with the base of Caban, and this game is all but over. This fortress is right on the front door as well for Caban. Look at this, Striker. Did you have to You know this you know this home right here has a family in it, right? You had to go and do that. Unbelievable. Striker just running circles around Caban's base now with his chariot archers. <laughs> and we, <laughs> we've got we've got some blame recon in the chat, as it should be. Hashtag blame recon. Look at this. This war elephant able to bring down yet another house. And again, Caban is just not able to respond here. He's just now back up to 150 pop 15 population, while Striker is still fully maxed at 200. 98 villagers to 41 for Caban. So this is just a, an absolute massive advantage here for for Striker. And Caban desperately trying to get back into the game, but he's still yet to build. Look at all these half-finished buildings. Uh, he's just so low on villagers. Abs you know, these chariot archers just ran in a circle around uh, Caban's base and just killed all his villagers. And he just has no villagers to be able to do anything. These buildings are half-finished. He still has no immortal camps. So, slow, agonizing death for Caban, but he does throw in the towel. G, G. G, G indeed. I'm going to break the game down real quick here. I'm going to go ahead and... Go ahead and say that while we have some visitors from Give You Anxiety stream, uh, if anyone wants to play a show match or if there are any other tournament games that can be played, let me know and we'll get those going um, so that we can just kind of ride these coattails here and, um, and entertain these folks while they're still hanging around. 
Uh, I'm going to break the game down here in a second, but just real quick, while we still have some viewers from Give You Anxiety stream, I just want to give you guys a heads up that uh, this game, again, is completely free to play. No microtransactions. If you like Age of Empires games, if you like RTS, if you if you like video games, if you like to have fun, download the game, okay? And check this out. The Romans are coming. That's right. You heard that right. The Romans will be coming to Age of Empires Online thanks to the Project Celeste development team. Let's break down this game real quick. Macro, heavily in Striker's favor, outgathered in terms of resources, more technologies, and um, better military composition here. Uh, as you can see, uh, Caban, despite the fact that Caban had a significant lead in terms of military population, Striker never really fell below about 30, between you know 25 and 30 military population. Again, those chariot archers and Elephants are just super strong. Uh, Caban was not able to deal with those effectively. Uh, got those mounted archers out too late. Uh, never had any immortals. And so, uh, ultimately, again, maybe just Caban, maybe Caban is a little unfamiliar with the, the other civs. Maybe he's unfamiliar with the Persian military. So, watch out, folks, because I think Caban is, is going to be a big and up-and-coming player for sure. As you can see, Striker had... Villager population advantage uh, from about the mid game. So, well played there to our players. Striker takes game number three and the series two to one in favor of Striker. So. So, Striker wins game number three and the series. Let's get the let's get the brackets up here. If you guys want to take a look at the brackets for the Cup of Beer tournament, Cup of Beer number four. <laughs> Alpha Leopard says he just won five hundred dollars because he correctly. Uh, wagered that striker would win. Indeed, you did, my friend. Well done. Let's not forget that it's Recon's fault, but nevertheless. Congratulations to striker. Wait, is Feldfeld actually come on? I don't think I ever realized that, but is Feldfeld Caban? My bad if you are. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. I love you. Pharaoh says uh, Caban hired Mista for one game. Now, I think Caban's just very skilled, and I think he's uh, he's good with the Celts. So, well played there for him. Winner interview. <laughs> Uh, Striker, now that you've won this series, what are you going to do next? I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> 